Let's open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. God bless you and good morning to you. As, uh, as we continue our time through this timely book, I tell you, it's a book that's speaking to us prophetically because we talked about it before. The church in Thessalonica is a very healthy church. It's a church that is rooted and grounded, and it's amazing because, first of all, it's two reasons it's amazing. First reason is Paul was only there for three weeks, and he was driven out of the place. Only there three weeks. Second of all, it's amazing, this church is probably about two years old in the Lord. Boy, and yet they're grounded, they're rooted, they're established in God like we talked about last week. Let's look at chapter 3, if you would, with me this morning. Verses 3 and 4, as we leave off from last time, we're in chapter, excuse me, in verse 2, where Paul says he's sending Timothy, our brother, minister of God, fellow laborer in the gospel. And he was sending Timothy to do two things, and there it is at the end of verse 2, to establish them and encourage them concerning the faith. Just like that video we just had, it kind of, it kind of just... Sim, sim, uh, it actually just in a very simple way states our faith. So Paul said those two things he wanted Timothy to do when he got there. And the reason he does it is in our focus this morning. Verse 3, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we were appointed to this. And then first, verse 4, for in fact, we told you before when we were with you. And he says here that we should suffer tribulation just as it happened and you know. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your word that doesn't let us be blindsided when it comes to issues and situations and conditions of this life. And one of those things is suffering. That suffering comes, but Lord, in your strength, we can we can stay firm in you. So, Lord, the, this two verse, these two verses and what Paul ministered to them, we pray by your spirit, you minister it to us so that we will be never shaken. It's in Jesus' name now we look in your word. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about being never shaken. That's what he says there in verse 3. He says the reason we're letting Timothy come to do those two things we talked about last week, establish and encourage you is so that you wouldn't be shaken. You wouldn't be shaken. Think about the things that come against our lives, things that, that challenge us, to say the least, but also things that come in and almost seemingly cripple us. You and I are called to be Christians that stand in a, a position that only God helps us stand in and not be shaken by it. One of the moving stories I heard many years ago was concerning this minister in this, this Eastern Europe town during the time that the, that the Nazis were just going through Eastern Europe and devastating towns and even countries like Hungary. And there was one town that they went into, and they had a tactic. And the tactic was, was to pretty much disarm the people psychologically. And the way that they did that, they would move into a town, coming in with their stomping high and hitting the ground, making noise. And then another thing they would do is, is that they would grab all the, the pretty much leadership, the essential people of government, and they would bring them out and put them in the square there in the center and call all the people in the town to come out and look. Look at these people. After they stripped them naked, after they beat them, sometimes senseless. And it was to show the people, oh, these are your, these are your leaders. This is what we think of your leaders. And they would spit on them and just degrade them before the people. There was one minister who was in this crowd of leadership who seemingly and was seriously unmoved by what was happening. He wasn't enjoying it at all, but he wasn't 
flinching like the others did when the soldiers would fake a punch or slap him. Or he didn't seem embarrassed like the other ones did. He just stood there unshaken. And this just made the, the, the Nazi soldier, the officer, upset. And he said, oh, you're a tough guy. You're a tough guy. And he took out his gun, and he put his gun right to his head. How tough are you now? And the guy didn't show any kind of emotion. He took his ring, his wedding ring, off his finger, and he hurled it away and threw it away. How tough are you now? How tough are you out now, Mr. Tough Man? It wasn't until this Nazi soldier officer saw in the distance a little girl and she was crying and he realized this is that man's daughter and he went over and he grabbed her and pulled her over to him he said this is your daughter huh this is your daughter he took his gun and he put his gun to her head now tough guy how tough are you and he was going to literally pull the trigger until the minister said, stop, stop. He said, I'm sorry I'm not responding the way that you need me to respond. But it's only because my faith and hope in God is so secure. What happens to me on the outside doesn't move me. Gosh, I want to be like that. I want to be like, I don't think I'll, I'll ever have to do, stand before someone with a gun to one of my children's head or something, but I want, I want to be firm. I want to, I want to never be shaken. Because I can admit in my life, I get shaked by little stuff. Appointments at the DMV. <laughs> Ingrown toenails. I just become a Christian sissy. <laughs> I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be like that. I want to never be shaken. And Paul talks in these two verses how these Christians will live never shaken. How they will have this ability to move this way. Like this guy, this minister who stood before these, these horrible people. In our afflictions, we must see God, first of all, we must see God greater. See, that's the point, is how I see God in this. I need to see him greater. We sung about that in a couple of songs. Always seeing him greater than our condition. Always seeing him bigger. David would say that. and Be magnified, oh God. He would ask that God would be greater. He'd be bigger. He'd be enlarged in spite of the enemy that was coming against him, David wanted to see the God bigger. He wanted to see his Lord bigger. Also, we need to understand in our afflictions that God is with us. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And it's important to have that solidified. It's important to have that firm. It's important to have that settled in, in our hearts and souls. God is with me. It's like being like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, huh? In the fire, in the furnace. There was a fourth person, and that was Jesus. And to be able to see Jesus in the furnace, in the fires of life that we go through, in the conditions that are unfavorable we go through, we need to see God bigger. We need to understand God is with us. And thirdly, here's the big one. We get it from Romans 8, 28. We need to know that God's going to work this thing for good. That this is not going to be just suffering for no purpose or no reason. This, this condition, this hardship, this problem, this cancer, this whatever it is, God will use it for his good. And it'll work out good for you and me. Being able to do that is, is, is important, this condition. There needs to be a right understanding in afflictions. And it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Here's the right understanding. Here's how we should approach afflictions. First of all, he says here, for our light afflictions. I ain't never said that. Mine are always heavy. 
But Paul says here, we need to see these things. We need to understand these afflictions as light afflictions, which are, first of all, for a moment. That's another thing I struggle with. It seems like it's forever. It doesn't get better soon enough for me, and it ain't light, but that's my problem. He says here, it's doing something. Here's the benefit of it again. Is working for us, it says here, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Exceeding, ever growing, ever becoming greater. And, it says here, eternal weight of glory. He was saying here that, that these light afflictions, in comparison to what we're going to have in glory, what we're going to have in Jesus, is light, and it's only for a little time, a little moment compared to eternity. How many understand eternity is a long time? It's forever, and hallelujah. (laughs) Compared to what we struggle with here, what we have here, what we don't have here, eternity is forever, and there everything will be met. Every need, everything within our soul will be satisfied. That earth can't deliver. It's an eternal weight, volume, weight of glory. And you and I should always have that eternal perspective anytime we go through something here. You can only have that eternal perspective, you and I, can only have it when we're saved, when we trust Jesus Christ for the salvation of our souls. When we believe that Christ died on the cross for us, we get born again, and we have eternal life. Gosh, you, you are hearing my voice now, whether it's by YouTube or you're here this morning. Whatever it may, wherever you are, how you're hearing this, consider, consider, do you have an eternal weight of glory coming? Can you expect glory? And it's all because of Jesus, all because of him, that eternity comes. I heard somebody give a kind of a, a story about the, thief on the cross. It just takes it from his time on the cross there with Jesus. And he asked Jesus, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, they're both hanging on the cross. When you come into your kingdom, the thief on the cross said, remember me. And Jesus affirms to him, this day you are in a paradise. Wow. The story goes on from that where the now the thief, he dies on the cross, but he enters into eternal life. He's standing at the pearly gates. And someone asks him, hold on a minute. Why do you think you should gain access in here? I don't see that you've ever been to church. I don't see that you've ever been baptized. I don't see that you ever went to Bible college or been on a mission trip. I don't even see you have a record that you gave any money to the glory of God. What makes you think? And you should gain access into here. And the guy said to the man who asked him that, he said, because he said I can come. (laughs) (laughs) Hallelujah. Jesus said he can come. And every person needs to know that Jesus says you can come in your faith in him. And you have that access. You have that access that can never be taken away from you. That eternal life, that, that eternal weight of glory, it says there. How can we live never shaken? That's our verses here, verses 3 and 4 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Look at the first thing in verse 3 we see is that the reason is about being shaken. So he introduces this fact of shaking by saying that no one should be shaken. He sent in Timothy to do this, that no one should be shaken. The word shaken there means to be moved. This means to be moved. It means to be knocked off tilt. It means to be off Turned away from something, from something where you, I should be going, we end up moved from that. Like being moved from, from trusting in God. Moved from trusting in God. That, that, that thing happens more than we ever want to admit, and we see people that it happens to. It may be your case. Maybe there was something that happened in your life, and you know what you said? You know what? No. No, I'm, I'm just going to have to deal with this my own way. And you stop trusting God. And then you start thinking that you can do it your own way. And praise God. God is patient. Oh, praise God. He's patient. And he waits for us. 
and we can come back. We can come back. Moved away from trusting God. Also moved from, from the truth of God. From the truth of God. That's, that, that's happened, I'm sure, in our own lives. We see it happen with other people. Is that there's a secure truth, just like that video we just saw a few minutes ago. We, we see that there is, there is truth of God that are non-negotiable. They're truth. They, this is what needs to be heeded to and submitted to. But, but, but sometimes we get hit. We take a hit. We take an affliction and we move off that truth in all kind of various ways. Also, we're moved from the hope in God sometimes, from, the, from trusting God, from the truth of God, and then also from the hope of God. That's in all things. That's truth. That's, excuse me, that's hope here on earth, but also hope for a heaven that we'll have one day. A lot of times we get hit, and we take a hit, and we get moved. We get moved. David had a, a remedy for this. It's in Psalm 16.8. It's on the screen. Psalm 16.8. David says this concerning his relationship with God. This is how David looked at it. He says, I set the Lord always before me. What are you saying, David? I'm saying I always have God in view. I always see God before I see the condition. I set the Lord always before me. I don't let those other things be before me. In faith in God, I set God before me. Because he, he says here, going on, he says, because he is at my right hand, which means he's at my point of strength. God is the one I look to for sure. My right hand means strong hand if you're left-handed. That's okay. (laughs) And you're not weird. Whatever your strong hand is. Some of you are extra blessed. You can do both hands, you know. But uh, the point is, is that David is his strength. David is his strength. David is the one that, that gives him, gives him the strength. And he, and he says, that because he, I set him always before me because he is at my right hand. He, he's the one that strengthens me. And then he says these words there, what we're talking about this morning. And he says here, he's at my right hand and I shall not be moved or not be shaken always having God in his person in his way in his greatness before us David says I, I'm not going to be moved I want you to let the Lord show you and I'm sure he's already been showing you because he loves you and I so much how how there needs to be some resets in your life and mine because maybe I let something else be before me and it's not the Lord And because of that, I'm suffering unnecessarily in some issues. But if I can just let God be, and God will help us let him be that, I can always set him before us, let him be our strength, and then we shall never be moved. None of us know what faces us tomorrow, but we do know this. God will be with us. And we can claim Psalm 16, verse 8, and and adapt it into our own lives and see the blessings of that. Moving on here in verse 3. He says in Thessalonians 3, by these afflictions, there's the word he introduces there. It's not a new word. We see it throughout the Bible. The word afflictions, it literally means or or foundationally means pressure, pressure. It's when the the walls are closing in. It's pressure. And, And how Paul saw it as pressure and how the Bible people saw it as pressure. It was something that they weren't able to get by and get through something. They weren't able to get over this. It was pressing in. It was pressing. It was the walls closing. And all of us have have afflictions like that. I was, I was wrestling with something last night that only God can resolve in my life. And I'm sure you have yours too. I sure hope you have yours too. I sure I ain't the only one. <laughs> That's tripping up here. I hope. We all have them, and we also hope in God to bring us through. He he brings us through the valley of the shadow of death. And in in the valley of the shadow of death is pressure. It's affliction. 
It's life that is hard and difficult. And only by way of God it will change. Only by way of God. And God chooses two ways to do that. He only chooses one of the two. Number one, he can change the situation. That's the one I like. Just take it away. Just heal me up here. Make it disappear. But there's also a second one he does. This one I don't like as much as the first one. <laughs> he'll, he'll change me. He'll help me bear it. He'll help you bear it. And I've seen so many people like that in my life. God has shown me and brought me into lives of people who God has changed them. Their situation still is what it is. It didn't get better. The person that they loved didn't come back. The baby's still sick, but yet they have changed. And now in this, they trust God. In the pressure, in the affliction, they trust God. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, Paul said these words because it goes along with what he says here in Thessalonians. We are hard pressed. Paul didn't just say pressed. We are hard pressed. And then he says on every side, yet not what? crushed Mm. we're hard pressed we're hard pressed things are coming in on every side all the sides it is it is hard to be emotionally claustrophobic i'm telling you bro that can that can mess with you when you feel like life is just coming in on you i've been i've been on an airplane claustrophobic but man, when you get emotionally where you ain't got no reason, it's just I'm, I'm out here in the freedom, I'm out here in life, but yet things are closing in and, and we get hard pressed. What you and I have to remember is that if we trust the Lord and we stay in that place, keeping God before us, we won't be crushed. We're pressed by the devil and he presses us to, to, to deceive us. The devil The devil's number one thing is to deceive you and I, plainly just to lie to you. That's why we have that that affirming statement, the devil is a liar. And he is a liar. Jesus said he lied from the beginning. He's the father of lies, Jesus called the devil. So he's the origin of it. And we go all the way back to the book of Genesis and tells Adam and Eve, "You you won't die. And Adam, if he was, if he could man up and do it again, Adam should have jumped in front of Eve and said, God said we would die. Now you need to go. (laughs) And Adam would have been a hero, man. (laughs) But because he just sit back and let Eve talk to him, and, and, you know, I guess he was all, a lot of people give Adam a a reason for that because, man, there ain't no other women around, man. (laughs) Eve's the only one, man. I don't want to mess this up. I'm just going to let her go, let her talk, let her reason with because because I just want her here today, you know. <laughs> Ain't like you can go find another one. There wasn't no more. So it's just a man. Yes. <laughs> he does. Okay. So, so the whole thing is that the devil comes to lie. He comes to lie. We're pressed also by people. Yeah. People. And, and, and a lot of times we as people, we press other people because we want people to conform to our way. We, we want you to do it our way. If I do this, you ought to do it. If I vote this way, you ought to vote this way. If I homeschool my kids, you ought to homeschool your kids too. And, you know, and we do that kind of stuff and we press people to move in ways that we're passionate about individually. You ought to read the same Bible translation I read, doggone it, if you were really spiritual. And, we, and we, we do with that kind of stuff. And we deal with that all the way from when we walk out our doors all the way to, to our jobs every day. There's that pressure, that press, being pressed by other people on every side. We're also pressed by the old nature to settle with the, with the old. Our old nature, man, to settle. And there's a new nature we have in Jesus. It's a new person. There's a, a, there we, our theme is dealing with a lot of butterflies this year on our graphics. Man, we're... we're we're butterflies. We're not worms. We're not caterpillars. We're butterflies. But that caterpillar wants to just come out of us and just, just creep around 
and we're pressed by it on every side, that old nature. And then also we're pressed by just weariness. We're just tired. It's no wonder the Bible says, don't grow weary in well-doing. You know why? Because we will do it. I'll get tired of discipline. I'll get tired of walking a way that is accordance to God's way and will. Just get tired. My flesh gets tired. And, and I need the strength. And you do too. So he says here concerning just there, the fact is that these afflictions come. Verse 3, at the end of verse 3, he says this. For you yourselves know that we were appointed to this. Yeah, wow. We do know. I don't like to think about it a lot. But we've been appointed to this. The word appointed there means set for or laid up or laid out for. We just, this, is, this is what we get. This is what we get. Jesus affirmed it in Luke chapter 10, verse 3. Luke 10, verse 3. Look what Jesus says on the screen. Jesus says, go your way. Go where, where, where you're going. Do what you're going to do. But behold this. See this. Recognize this. I send you out as lambs among wolves. Note the word behold. See, that's what the Thessalonica church knew, that they were appointed to this. They knew that with being a Christian comes difficulty. It's going against the flow. And you and I need to recognize that we're going against the flow. We need to behold, see it. We need to have it affirmed. We need to understand it comes. We need to understand that suffering comes with our faith. And I think it's going to intensify. We were talking about that in the prayer room today. I think it's going to intensify. The Bible seems to say it well. And it's going to intensify to the point is that you and I are not going to be appreciated for our faith in Jesus Christ, for our faith in what is right, and our faith to knowing that God is the only one that can change and bless this. And, and that's not going to make us favorable. It's not going to make us popular. It's not going to make us appreciate it. And I want us all to be something, and that's important for all of us to, to hold to, to hold to the reality, the reality that there's pressure. There's pressure in being a believer. Now, we'll, we'll, we'll get all the good stuff when we get to heaven. Hallelujah. But right here, we catch a lot of craziness right here. We catch a lot of things that are disordered. And you start finding that kind of stuff right at home, right at home. Because I'm sure I'm talking to some people here this morning that there are people who share your DNA, but they don't share your faith. And they're pretty open in letting you know about it. And that's, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. But in the world, in the world we live in, we're to have this. We've been appointed to it. We need to accept that. That's one of the ways of understanding of being, being, being able to bear it, is to understand it comes with being faith. Two more things here in verse 4, and we're done. He says here, four, in verse 4, for in fact, we told you before. And we talked about this before. I'm, I'm just so blessed by Jesus himself. He said that in Luke 10, 3. But also... Paul saying it here for us is that the word of God lets us know that God doesn't want us sucker punched. He doesn't want us blindsided. And, and that's what Paul saying to him. We, we told you this before. We told you to brace for impact. And we all need to brace for impact as Christians. It is not going to be a smooth ride. All the time. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be rejection. There's going to get, we're going to get pushed back. And Paul said, I told you this before. And the word of God is affirming it to us today. I don't think we can be too much affirmed of this, especially as we, we live deeper and deeper in the days that we live in, in these last days that we're living in, is that we realize that, that we're, not blind, we're not blindsided. God didn't want us blindsided. He wants us to understand where we're coming. There, there's two ways to get hit. One way is you don't see it coming. That hurts. At least the second way to get hit is you can brace for it. You can tense muscles 
You can cover your face. But boy, to get sucker punched is a horrible way to take a blow. And the Bible didn't want us to take a horrible blow. In this world, we're going to have tribulations. That's for the Christians. And we need to believe that. I never seen a t-shirt that has that. <laughs> Proudly wear it. In this world, we have tribulations. Those who live godly or desire to live godly will have tribulations. Because we don't hold to that kind of thing, man. We don't, we don't hold to that. We don't, we don't do that. No, we want to be people who have it all smooth sailing. Guess what? Me too. Me too. It's like that old Navy term, you know. May you have you know, following sails, smooth sails. May your, sh- your ship always have wind blowing and you're always just moving. It's always sunny. Gosh, that doesn't happen. It ain't always sunny, is it? But God tells us it's not going to be always sunny, and that's good. Last thing we see here at the end of verse 4 is he, he, he emphasizes this point again about it being appointed to us. He says, we should or we shall, we would suffer persecution. So we told you before that we would, affirmative, we would for sure suffer persecution. Look at 1 Peter, if you would, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter wants to give us the benefits of suffering and that when suffering comes, how God can use it in our better, for our good. And he says it here in verse 10 of chapter 5 of 1 Peter. He says, but may the God of all grace, praise God, he's a God of all grace, a God that gives everything of complete, all grace, complete grace. That means he's complete in his accepting of us. He's also complete in what he can do through us. You and I can, can deal with this stuff that we go through. The God of all grace, who's called us to, there it is again, eternal glory by Christ Jesus. We saw Paul say that, by Christ Jesus. And then he says this, after you have suffered a while. See there, he's talking like Paul. Wow, it seems like it's forever. But after you've suffered a while, after you've suffered a while, he says this, that God will perfect, establish, we saw that in verse 2, strengthen, we saw that too. And then look what he says here, and settle you. After you've suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. God will do that. And you and I, you and I need those four things. Can I get an amen? amen. You, you know, I know it was hard, but you got it out. And it's true. We need, we need those four things in our lives. We need those four things to be complete in our response in Jesus, is that we have this perfect, this completeness. We have this established rootness. We have this strength, strength to stand. And we're also settled. We're not moved. We're not shaken by where we are, by what we are experiencing and what we're doing. I, I had a, um, oh, Pam and I had an experience last week, Mother's Day. Um, we went to go visit Garcia. If you know Garcia, Garcia's a great part of this congregation. She hadn't come much. She has, she has these, this arthritis that is, is just crippling to her. And, and she walks with a walker and stuff. And Garcia, is, is, her presence is totally missed here. And, and I know for me, because he was such, such a, a light of influence. I was already prepared, because we, we, we've been there before a couple of times, and we're going to her house and just exchange her some Mother's Day hug, you know, and, and encourage her and take her a little something. And, and we go into the house and, and, and ring the doorbell, and, and I can hear the, the, the walker, boom. <laughs> Bloom, not. I understand. This is not new to me. I understand she has it. I understand it's going to take her whatever time it takes her to get to the door. I know she's on her way. She's downstairs and she's coming and she gets to the door and she opens the door and and she's hung. She's leaning over because of pain and back legs, and, but she looks up and she bling just smiles like. <laughs> Come on in. So 
Now she says, come on in. And we walk in and, and we sit down on the couch. And she carefully, with the walker in front of her, sits down on the, on the seat that she's sitting on. Her son William is there to be praying for him because he's hoping to get a kidney in July. He's a kidney transplant, get off of dialysis and stuff. And, and as she sat down, she, she's telling how you doing? How you doing? And she's telling us how she's doing. And while she's telling us how she's doing, she did something that she does a lot. And she did it again. In her pain, in her crippleness, in her slagging over, she started to sing something. You know, being with Garcia is like being with a musical. Now, I normally don't like musicals, <laughs> but I like Garcia singing. Okay. I walked out on musicals before, but I'm not going to walk out on Garcia. She begins to sing this old hymn just right there. After she, first she was talking, now she's singing. In her condition, with God's strength, She's able to get up a song. Gosh, I want to do that. Gosh, I want to be that. And it's only the people like Garcia who are never shaken. See, Garcia has learned to see God bigger than her arthritis, to see God bigger than her son waiting for a kidney transplant, than God bigger than any other thing she has to deal with. That's why she can sing a song in the midst of her condition. God help us be that way. Praise the Lord. I want to be that. I want to be never shaken. And with the help and grace, the God of all grace, we can be that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can be never shaken when you have place in our lives. And that place, David shared it, the Lord is always before him and at his right hand. David said, if this happens, I will never be moved. So Lord, help us reposition. Do a reset in our hearts and our souls that we put you before us. Help us to recognize, Lord, you're our strength. You're our ability to not be shaken. Father, I pray for those who don't know you this morning. We pray for these people that never accepted Jesus. Open their eyes to see today that Jesus is our salvation. And give them, Lord, the ability to recognize Christ as Savior and trust in that. So, Lord, wherever we go from here, we can be assured there will be some kind of affliction. There'll be some kind of hardship or pain, but help us to be like David. Help us to be like that minister in that little town. Help us to be like Garcia. Always with a song on our heart. Father, thank you for your goodness and grace, your mercy and love, and may it always go with us all of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Leadership meeting in 20 minutes right here. God bless you. Have a great week. Let's stand.